systemic factors we identified. They're here they are. The first one is the rise of monocracy in the party generally. But what does that mean? Uh, maybe it means people are asking for money or money is being used to buy things. I, I don't know. But, uh, but, but we'll look at it. After this, we'll look at the media and communication and then we'll look at election monitoring for today's serialization. So wait for it. He discusses the media and communication and he discusses election monitoring. The rise of monocracy, he says, a waning of party ideology and philosophy generally, leading increasingly to ethnocentrism and opportunistic attitudes to settler communities in various constituencies. Wow. The neglect of the party's social democratic focus in policy making. Mm. The growing alienation of the party's natural social democratic allies, workers, and their unions, farmers, small scale businessmen and women traders, teachers, nurses, civil servants, etc. And five, inadequate recognition of the demographic transition and urbanization trends in our national population. Then now let's get to the communication. All right. He says, nowhere were the pitfalls in the party government's communication work more evident than in our meeting with the party government communication strategy team. At the committee's meeting with the team, it was said that non-appointees who communicated on behalf of the party were often without mobility and other resources to help them carry out their work effectively. This, in their view, adversely impacted the relationship that they needed to establish and sustain with the producers and editors of both electronic and print media, thus invariably dis. dis disabling the party and government from setting the issues agenda in the media and leaving them little choice but to, but, but to be reactive in their interventions. Mm. This is quite loaded. Dr. Butcher says in their view, the, the people that came to the radio station, the producers, the, the people didn't have enough resources to create a relationship with the producers and editors. I don't understand that too much. He's saying that they needed some money so that they will have a good relationship with editors and producers. Editors and producers, we, we don't charge money. So, uh, but that, that, that's in the report. It's there. It's in the document. All right, let's move on. The group accused the managers of the government's communications work at the time of being dismissive about welfare issues. The communicators, the communicators also accused party and government of creating what they described as the divisions and class societies among communicators. They complained of being almost routinely underfunded. Hmm. Better connected communicators were better resourced, but were often so arrogant in their posturing and general attitude that they turned listeners off. The party, in their view, also failed to support the establishment of more pro-NDC media houses and had to rely on unfriendly media. Hey. It's interesting. The political conversation connotes unfriendly media and pro-media. That happens with ideology. So if you're a right-wing uh, or center-right like me, then you know that unfriendly media is a left-wing media, which is CNN. Yes. So if that's what he means, then we get it. But in Ghana, we don't quite have that. But he, he used the same term. He said unfriendly media. Okay. He said the NDC filled media, uh, the NDC media houses uh, and, and they had to rely on a friendly media. Okay, let's move on. This, Dr. Boche says, reduced the extent to which NDC messages could be carried on any given day. The committee found, though, that there were many radio stations owned by party members or supporters, but that the problem saw the quality of the problem was the quality of personnel in these stations and their tendency to source news from better established and unfriendly radio stations. I like this point because we've always been telling them that it's an intellectual exercise. That's the point Dr. Mocha is making, that they had radio stations, but the quality of people there, they couldn't write their own stories. So they are relying on stories from Joy FM, unfriendly, un, he didn't say Joy FM, he said unfriendly media. They are relying on uh, stories from because they don't have the quality. So if you set up a radio station as a politician, and you just set it up in name and you don't have the quality there, it will not have the influence that you're looking for. You'll not be able to spread your message to the people. That's a lesson from Dr. Butch's leave of Dr. Butch's report to the NDC, his own party. 
Okay, let's move on. Once again, the committee's engagement with a section of the press provided a window into the state of the party's relations with the media. The following is a sample of their views. There was disconnect between the media party and the government communication machinery. Party spokespersons go and mess up with other stations and come to do the damage control on Radio Gold. NDC disrespected its own media. NDC is intolerant of the media. NDC sponsored pro-MPP media who painted themselves as neutral. NDC had no patience to build a neutral station. A neutral station? Okay. NDC press corps went through inhumane treatment under the party. President Mohammed's in-house communications team was squandering resources of the president meant for communication strategy. Ill treatment of the media. No respect for the media. One, the presidential press corps was told by Standogwe that they were not part of the system and that they were privileged to be party of the presidential press corps. I, I'm not, I, I don't understand that anyway, but let's move on. Quarterly stipend meant for the press corps was not disclosed until August 20th, 2015. Only four out of the 34 members of the presidential press corps were given vehicles from a pool of about 200 vehicles available for distribution to the press corps and others. Hey, this one, I have to read it again. Dr. Manebu Ama and Standogbe were the president's undoing. Wait, 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 wait. This is on 200 cars. Uh, 2015, I was here, I was in the media, I was press, but uh, I was here. 200 cars, oh. Let me read that again. Let me read, let me, let me read, let me read that again. Okay. Only four out of the 34 members of the presidential press corps were given vehicles from a pool of about 200 available for the distribution to the press. Dr. Omani Buama and Stan Dogbe were the president's undoing. These are the words of Kwesi Bochwe, they're not our words. Stan Dogbe smashed a pressman's recorder on one occasion and slapped another. Stan Dogbe edited, in quotes, edited money meant for victims of the accident involving the president's press corps from 50,000 cities that was supposed to be given to them to 5,000 cities and others got 10,000 cities. President never met his own presidential press corps.